let us all unite with our chaplain in prayer. Unto thee, O God, Father of all, do we come into this hour of grief and bereavement. Unto thee do we send up the cry of our sorrowing hearts. Thou who dost mark the sparrow's fall, and number even the hairs of our head, look with infinite compassion on our weakness. And in this hour of need, give the strength which thou alone can impart. Standing by the open portals of this house, appointed for all the livings, we pray for light, for light to illuminate the dark path which our brother has trod, for light to drive away all the shadows of morality and reveal to our anxious souls those seren heights of joy and beauty, whither we trust our brother has ascended. As we consign his body to its resting place, may we realize how weak and impotent is every human arm, and trust in thy might alone for deliverance from the dominion of death. Grant thy sustaining grace to these mourners and bereaved friends. May all find rest and comfort in thee, and relying upon thine infinite love, wait in patience, hope for death to be swallowed up in victory. Amen. Brethren and friends, from time immemorial it has been the custom among the fraternity of ancient free and accepted Masons, at the request of a brother or of his family, to perform the last rites with the usual ceremonies of the craft. Conforming to this usage, we have appeared in the character of Freemasons to offer to the memory of our brother this tribute of affection. Brethren, we mourn today the loss of a brother whose spirit has been summoned to the land where our fathers have gone before us. Again, we behold the narrow house appointed for all the living, and our thoughts turn to the silent realm where, in that peace which the world can neither give nor take away, lie the unnumbered dead. The storms and the sunshine pass over them, and they are not disturbed. Stones and lettered monuments symbolize the love of surviving friends and convey the silent admonition, Seek ye the narrow path and the straight gate that lead unto eternal life. Again, we are called upon to consider the uncertainty of human life, the absolute certainty of death, and the vanity of earthly ambition. Change and decay are written upon every living thing. The cradle and the coffin stand side by side, and it is a melancholy truth that as soon as we begin to live, at that moment also, we begin to die. How often the reminders of mortality cross our paths. The funeral bell tolls in our ears, and the mourners go about the streets. Yet, how seldom do we seriously consider our approaching end? We go on from design to design, add hope to hope, and lay out plans for the employment of many years. The messenger of death comes when least expected, and at a time which to us seems the meridian of our existence. What are all the externals of human dignity, the power of wealth, or the charms of beauty, when nature has paid her just debt? View life stripped of its ornaments and exposed in its natural weakness, and we see the vanity of all earthly things, save those which go to the growth and perfection of individual character. In the grave, all fallacies are detected. All ranks are leveled, all distinctions done away. Here, the scepter of the prince and the staff of the beggar lay side by side. Happy indeed it is for us and blessed the agencies that make it possible that while our eyes may be dim with tears as we think of our departed brother, we may, in the sincerity of our hearts, offer to his memory the commendation of having lived a useful and exemplary life and as a just and upright mason. And so, my brethren, let us see to it, and so regulate our lives by the plumb line of justice, ever squaring our actions by the square of virtue, that when the Grand Warden of Heaven shall come for us, we may be found ready. Let us cultivate assiduously the noble tenets of our profession, brotherly love, relief, and truth. From the square, learn morality. From the level, equality. And from the plumb, rectitude of life. 
With the trowel, spread liberally the cement of brotherly love. Circumscribed by the compasses, let us ponder well our thoughts and actions. And let all the energies of our minds and all the affections of our souls be employed in the attainment of our Supreme Grand Master's approbation. Then, when our dissolution draws nigh, and the cold winds of death come sighing around us, and his chill dews already glisten upon our forehead, with joy shall we go from our labors on earth to eternal refreshment in the paradise of God, where, by the benefit of the pass of a pure and blameless life, and an unshaken confidence in the merits of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, shall we gain ready admission into the celestial lodge where the supreme architect of the universe presides. There, placed at his right hand, he shall be pleased to pronounce us just and upright masons. The lambskin, or white apron, was the first gift of Freemasonry to our departed brother. It is an emblem of innocence and the badge of a Freemason. This I now deposit with our deceased brother. We are here reminded of the universal dominion of death. The arm of friendship cannot interpose to prevent his coming. The wealth of the world cannot purchase exemption, nor will the innocence of youth or the charms of beauty change his purpose. This evergreen is an emblem of an enduring faith in the immortality of the soul. By it we are reminded that we have within, within us a life which shall survive the grave and which shall never die. By it we are admonished that we too, like our deceased brother whose remains lie here before us, shall soon be clothed in the wardrobe of death. Through our belief in the mercy of God, we may confidently hope that our souls will bloom in eternal spring. This too I deposit with our deceased brother. Brethren, please prepare to give the funeral honors. We consign his body to the earth. We cherish his memory here. We commend his spirit to God who gave it. Brother Secretary, you will read the obituary roll. Brother Cindy Cook was born October 22, 1932, in Brooklyn, New York. Brother Kluwick was initiated to degree of Veteran Apprentice on October 20, 1962, passed to the degree of Fellowcraft on June 11, 1964, raised to the sublime degree of Master Mason on October 8, 1964, all at Annapolis Lodge, number 89, in Annapolis, Maryland. Kulik was called to the Celestial Lodge by the Supreme Architect of the Universe on October, I'm sorry, on August 12th, 2021. Thus, then, the record of, an up, of a just and upright Mason. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. The passing of our brother from the cares and troubles of this transitory existence has removed another link from the fraternal chain which binds us together. May we who survive him be more closely bound in the ties of union and friendship. May we, during the short space allotted to us here, wisely and usefully employ our time and, in the interchange of kind and friendly acts, mutually promote the welfare and happiness of each other. Unto the earth we consign the body of our deceased brother. We trustingly leave his spirit in the hands of him who doeth all things well. With those of his 
immediate relatives and friends who are most heart-stricken at the loss we have all sustained, we sincerely, deeply, and most affectionately sympathize. He who tempers the wind to the shorn lamb looks with infinite compassion on the bereaved and sorrowing in the hour of their desolation. Our Heavenly Father will fold the arms of his love and protection around those who place their trust in him. Soft and safe be the earthly bed of our brother. Bright and glorious be his rising from it. Fragrant be the acacia spring that shall flourish there. May the earliest buds of spring bring forth their beauties over his resting place. And in the bright morning of the world's resurrection, may his soul spring into newness of life and expand into immortal beauty in realms beyond the skies. Until then, dear friend and brother, until then. Farewell. Our secretary told you that Brother Kulik was born in Brooklyn, New York, and he grew up in the Jewish persuasion. This song honors his Jewish heritage. Brother Mike? May the angels be your guide, may they lead you into paradise and take you home to the new Jerusalem. There is one thing I ask of God, for this I long, for this I hope, to dwell in the house of God every day of my life. May the angels be your guide. May they lead you into paradise and take you home to the new Jerusalem. When I, when I cry out, hear my voice. Have mercy, Lord, and answer me. Do not cast me away in anger, for you are my help. May the angels, my may the, May, may the angels be your guide. May they lead you into paradise and take you home to the new Jerusalem. I shall see God's goodness forever dwell with the living. Hope in God and take heart, place your trust in the Lord. May, may the angels be your guide, may they lead you into paradise and take you home to the new Jerusalem. Let us again unite with our chaplain in prayer. Almighty God, again, we implore thy blessing as we turn from this solemn service to the no less solemn duties of life. We have consigned the body of our brother to its resting place, and with unfaltering trust, we command his spirit to thy care. If we feel that there is one less tie binding us to the earth, May we also feel that there is another, a deathless tie, binding us to heaven. 
and there shall be no night there. O oh, blessed assurance, the last farewell spoken, the last sigh breathed, the last cry of anguish, change into an anthem of immortal joy. In our present grief, we cling to thy promise that thou will at last wipe away all tears. Gathering here such fresh experience of thy love, catching here such glimpse of the exceeding glory that awaits us, may we feel that it is better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting. May we keep the memory of the virtues of our brother, green and fragrant forever. And now, O oh God, we pray for thy hands to lead us in all the paths our feet may tread. And when the journey of life is ended, may light from our immort immortal home illuminate the dark valley of the shadow of death. And voices of loved ones gone before welcome us home to that house not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens, where no discordant voice shall arise, and all the souls shall experience shall be perfect bliss, and all it shall express shall be perfect praise, and love divine ennoble every heart, and hosannas exalted employ every tongue. Amen. 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 Amen.